We are so back. We are so back to Phoenix, right? Um, sorry, I'm not dancing today. I'm not feeling super great. My, I've been feeling really like light and shaky, just like not great. So I'm gonna try to dance tomorrow, but for today we Phoenix. Hi, Jazz, how are you, BB? Thank you for 23 months. Y'all wanna hear me blow my nose real quick? <sighs> uh. Oh, I'm sorry, Nami. I need to upload it today, I just forgot. I'm sorry, I'll upload it today when I'm done. I do have it. Louder. <laughs> oh. Ew. <laughs> um, I have I have it. I just didn't upload it. I'm really sorry. It's been a busy week. I'm preparing for St. Jude. And I have the summit at the end of the month, so I'm really excited. Crancho! Hi YouTube, who's your favorite streamer? Why is it Wasaba me? Alright, well, I will not stand for being insulted today. I simply won't. Um this is mine. I think we're going to the trial today? <gasps> yes, this is where I left off. Eee. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. I find this so weird. She like, she confessed to murder, she confessed to murdering her subordinate, but the body was found in Edgeworth's car and she confessed to it. But like, there's all these things where I'm like, I don't think she did it. I just don't think she did it. I don't know, it's just so weird. The whole thing is so weird. Yeah, Edgeworth's shitty, ugly car. They found it in his ugly little sports car that gets like five miles to the gallon. <laughs> his ugly little red sports car. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. Wait, can I look at the court record again? Goodman's ID. Ooh. King of Prosecutors trophy, which is broken for some reason. Still don't know why. Um, Edgeworth's knife, the murder weapon, usually in Edgeworth's toolbox, traces of victim's blood, no prints. I am confused on why she confessed to the murder when this is very much looking like Edgeworth did it. <laughs> the body's in his car and was killed. he was killed with his knife, so... Record of parking in the prosecutor's office lot entered lot at 512. A work of art designed by, <laughs> a work of art designed by the chief of detectives and created by Detective Gumshoe. Uh, death due to loss of blood, one knife wound, dead within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Victim's memo found in the car trunk 675-12-2. Look at that cell phone. Ugh. Technology used to be it used to serve puss. <laughs> Technology used to be innovative. Property of Lana Sky, last call made to her sister Emma. Ima at 518 on the day of the murder. Okay. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. <laughs> The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Thank you. That phone may be able to call someone. That phone cannot call someone and play snake at the same time, but it can do both of those things separately. And that's innovation. Miss Skye, you, you remind me a lot of Mia, but there's one decisive difference between you and her. She had bigger boobs. <laughs> What did I just say earlier about commenting on women's bodies? And here I am being like, I can feel the feminism leaving my body. <laughs> and that is, you're not a defense attorney. And also you're alive and Mia's dead actually. Mia's been dead for a few months. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. I love this part of Phoenix Wright games. I love it, it's so fun. I love, I love um, doing the cross-examination. It's hard, but it feels really good when you get it right. <laughs> My first trial without a Faye helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. I'm a big boy defendant now, or defense attorney, whatever. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. I would rather she wasn't. <laughs> yeah, they're so exciting. If, when you like, when you know what the right evidence is, ooh, it feels so good. 
made some tea too. I'm just waiting for it to cool down. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. I find it interesting that he's allowed to be the prosecutor in this case when he's involved in it. Like, the guy was the guy was found dead in the, his car, and he was murdered with his knife. So, like, isn't it like a conflict of interest if he's allowed to be the prosecutor? It's so weird. So weird. Hi, Cadis. Thank you so much. Thank you for 64 months. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. It's worth. <gasps> it's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. You mean like how I'm in love with you? <laughs> he knows I'm in love with him. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. <laughs> Ema's like, I did it. <laughs> I did it. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. Edgeworth said, said electric chair. There was a witness to her crime, a professional witness. Professional witness. Call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. Prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. Oh, not this lady. Not the lunch lady. Why can't he be forceful to us? Godfiend, down boy. The cough up queen? Still don't know why her name is Cough Up Queen. Hmm? Haven't I seen you somewhere? I just sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. Judge is really wolfing it down. <laughs> and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. What if she poisoned it? Wouldn't that be cunty? <laughs> Will the witness state her name and profession? Oh, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name, profession, now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. <laughs> oh. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. <laughs> Hurry it up. Mm, very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Huh? What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police? Huh? She was a first-rate homicide detective. Huh? Well, if anyone would know how to cover up a murder, it'd be her. Are you kidding? She was here when the murder happened and she used to be a homicide detective? She knows what she's doing. It was her. Lock her up. Lock her up. I want her out of here. What? Miss Starr was a detective? Ah! <laughs> I, I know who you are. Cough up? Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Starr. Why is he so nervous? Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. Oh. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. 
Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Oh, I got a floor plan! I got a floor plan! Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. She apprehended her? Seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright, uh, I can't agree on the principle, Your Honor. Excuse me. I had kimchi on my break. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. <laughs> hey! I'm not a loser. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? Ooh, testimony! <laughs> Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I always knew I'd watch a murder. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. What does garish mean? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Good Detective Goodman's chest. I thought it was in his stomach. Oh, just one knife. Okay, maybe not. I could have sworn they said it was to the stomach. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching. Hmm. As you can see, there's no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? Oh my god, what is wrong with her? She's crazy. I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. I don't know, maybe I just push her or press. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to a tragedy. <laughs> the lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Starr, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator, and if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. <laughs> that said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well, you may continue. Ugh! <laughs> You're all worms to me. Deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sense something. Perhaps it was... Didn't she say her boyfriend worked in... She said her boyfriend worked in the security... Office. But she said she saw it through the chain link fence, so she would have been in the visitors. She would have been over here. But she said her boyfriend works in the security room. Oh, I guess she must have parked there as a... Oh. I'm gonna press her anyway. This boyfriend. He's the detective? Not that boyfriend. The security guard. <laughs> that boyfriend? You have several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. <laughs> Sometimes I love her. She's like, in my phone, they're all listed as this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. <laughs> She's fucking scary. I love her. Hold on, I just need some tea. Ugh. <laughs> Here to join? <laughs> the yet another boyfriend position is still open for application. <laughs> I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. <laughs> the security guard room is in the lot in A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. Ah, uh, yeah. So she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. Got it. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finally owned detective's intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. 
By Garish Carr, you mean Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? <laughs> Indeed it was. I still can't believe he's allowed to, like, be the prosecutor. What an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you're sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I'm certain it was her. She's telling the truth, we're doomed. 30 feet is kind of far, isn't it? Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Or I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. She is threatening me on the stand. She's threatening me on the stand. Yeah, you flip that email hair. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. How is she getting away with this? That, that was inspiring. I hate this judge. <laughs> I hate this man. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism. I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. A photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunch boxes is rigged with a camera. That's creepy. <laughs> what is wrong with her? I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of Crafters. Which one is this? <laughs> well, this is most certainly the defendant. But she looks left-handed here. Are we doing this again? Are we doing the whole left-handed, right-handed thing again? She's closing it with her left. This better go on the gaming channel or else. <laughs> Listen, my gaming channel has exactly five subscribers, but those five subscribers are passionate. <laughs> um, I'm uploading the last, the, the last one we did today because I forgot to, I'm sorry. And then I'll upload this one tomorrow. Crime photo. The moment of the crime is photographed by Angel Star. Moment of the crime. She's closing. That is unmistakably Lana Sky. So what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. But she wasn't, though. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? Is it your knife? It is your knife after all. How would she know this? How can she measure all this stuff? Um, yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are by nature well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg from my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean a person. <laughs> Me, if I was a defense attorney. Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. I'm going to press this, and then I'm going to present the photo in the other one. <laughs> oh, his allergy's going crazy. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm. The defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Thank you for the blesses. I feel blessed. Too late. Yes, the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I, I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Starr's testimony is flawless. No, it's not. No, it's not. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that. Okay, I'm gonna save and I'm gonna present the photo. Cause she's, she's not holding a knife and she's closing the, she's closing the trunk with her left hand. And she said she was right-handed. I didn't press that one. 
holding a knife in her right hand. I'm gonna try it. I think I'm gonna get a penalty, but whatever. I'm gonna try it. Oh, but there are blood stains on the right side of her coat. Mm, I'm gonna try. Oh, I got it! I got it! <laughs> yeah! And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Guy stab the victim with the knife? As I've already said, yes. I would swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. Not this again, not the look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? <laughs> not the ellipses. <laughs> he says it every time. Look at this photograph. Ahem. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. <laughs> that had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. And how can you tell that? Yeah, the, right, there's blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph. Uh, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. They don't have, um, they don't have colored photos in 2016. <laughs> Those don't exist. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you gonna just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ugh, you got a better idea. No problem, me? <laughs> me getting sentenced to death, no problem. I don't wanna make anything harder on you guys, so yeah, just whatever you think is right is easiest, we'll just do that. I just wanna do what's easiest for everybody, no problem. I don't know what I'm objecting. <laughs> I don't know what I'm objecting. I'm just gonna try my best. <laughs> she was changing her oil. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Yes. I knew that. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. That's it? <laughs> if you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo size lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understand it, but good advice. <laughs> Whose side are you on? Whose side is Ima on? I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was premeditated murder. Objection. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh, if it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Oh, uh, I hate when he gets me like this. No, Edgeworth. If I were Phoenix Wright, I would simply like squeeze my boobs together and go, no, Edgeworth. It's not true. Warg. <laughs> These gloves do not, do seem to tell, oh, sorry. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony so that I can press it. The murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. Do I have anything else? No prints. Mm. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves, like driving gloves? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of, of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ugh. Impressive. I'm sorry. They took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. 
I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. Not the flesh wound again. Oh. Um. Could it be that it wasn't premeditated because Miles had only, like, just gotten back? Name of deceased, Bruce Goodman, 36 male. Same time of death, February 21st between 4 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood from chest wound. Oh, it wasn't the chest. Wound was caused by a 4.5 inch knife. Single stab was found. I think this is the one, you guys. I think that's it. That's it. He had only just gotten there like three minutes earlier. Victim's memo found in car trunk. this again. What's wrong? You look like I do during finals. Never mind, it's nothing. I don't know. What would prove that it's not premeditated? Hold on, I'm gonna say. Could it be the note? I still don't know what it means though. I never pressed this either. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like, how would you say? Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. Yeah, but she was wearing gloves, so she could have, like, taken the gloves off and then called. I guess. Or was she found with the gloves on? I don't know. That was what I was thinking, too, because I was like, I could present the phone because there's no blood on it, but also, like, she could have just taken them off. I don't know. I'll try that one. I'll try that one because I saved. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Speaking of a detective's intuition... Wasn't the victim Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tang tangy or tang tangy? With experience on the streets, a greenhorn. Then I must be hard yellowed and sharp as a tag. <sighs> yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. <laughs> in any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Okay, I'm gonna try the phone. It's so weird, cause the, well, this the handle doesn't have blood on it either. I don't know. I'm gonna try. No, I don't think this is it. No, it wasn't it. No. Ugh. That's fine, I saved. Ugh, what is it? My other guess was the parking ticket. Hi, Templar! How was your stream? Hi, BB! Good to see you. How are you? Maybe I could try the parking ticket because he only just got back. I'm gonna try the ticket. No. What is it? I'm gonna try one more and if I get it wrong, I'm just gonna load the save. I must be on the wrong track. Well, yeah. I haven't tried the note, but I don't know what the note means. Okay. 
Oh my god. I'm just gonna load. <laughs> Man, I don't know! I feel so goofy! I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. Murder was planned, rubber gloves prove it. I already pressed her on it. Usually in Edgeworth's toolbox, traces of victim's blood, no prints. This kind of just backs up there, the prosecution, because there's no prints on it. <laughs> oh, fun! Oh, how fun, so exciting! That was it? It was the murder weapon? Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? The bloody murder weapon, a red car. The defendant is the chief prosecutor. Oh, mommy, our prosecutors, bad people who brought a child to a murder trial. The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing, the murder weapon? Huh? Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Whoa! Wait, does he mean, does he mean that she left it in there or that it just happened to be in there? Order. Great, now the tide is turning in my favor. I don't really get it. <laughs> is it because she used someone else's knife that just happened to be in the car or because she left the knife in the car? Happened to be, okay. I wouldn't have gotten that. <laughs> Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. No, no, no. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. He got my ass so hard. <laughs> what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need to prove, nothing else. Very good, Ms. Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would... Oh. I didn't read what that said. I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. This again? Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you thinking I think? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? <laughs> this again? Oh my god. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Again and again, you say? Hmm. Interesting. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? <laughs> In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Hmm. Hmm. Over and over. Hmm. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. How do you know that? 
You have no proof that Miss Guy called him there. You have no proof that she did it. Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth thoughts? There's no record of a call made on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness, why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Why? What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Then why the fuck are you saying it? <laughs> this bitch, this, this woman is either super mega cunty or super mega cunty. You know what I mean? Like she's both good and bad cunt. Like <laughs> there's no in between. <laughs> there's no in between. She's both. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now what's inside? How am I supposed to know? See? We agree there's a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? No. Schrodinger's gun. <laughs> that needs to be that needs to be a category on on uh, drag race. <laughs> this week's category, Schrodinger's cunt. <laughs> Hi, Compy, how you doing? Happy 94 months. That was the year I was born. Not 1994, just 94. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels, don't you agree? I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. This judge isn't very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the life in again and again. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting that you say that. <laughs> you say she stabbed him again and again? But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. <laughs> what the fuck? Who's eating moss? I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this. But take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha, uh -huh. you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. I called the fucking objection. How come he gets a gold star? I called it. What a hunk, he's my hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed. What the fuck, am I invisible? What the hell? Well, witness? You got the crime scene set, right? Is this what ADHD is? You're on the stand for a murder trial being questioned and you just go, here's your lunch. <laughs> just out of nowhere. Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Okay. A bit, yeah. A man repeating your joke but louder and getting a big laugh six days after women's history. <laughs> it never takes a break. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Dude. How many times are we gonna let her testify before we kick her out of here? Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Muffler? What's a muffler? Oh, it's a thing on the car? But it's not her car. I have to Google car stuff. Oh, a scarf? No, like a scarf. Oh. Hold on, where's the photo? But she's not wearing a scarf. Wait, 
Wait, I'm gonna save. <laughs> I need to save. <gasps> Jordan! Hi, Gatoon! How are you? I wish I trusted anyone as much as she's trusting this <laughs> I don't... Fashion tape can only do so much. Breast tape can only do so much. She's not wearing one. She just keeps lying and lying. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. <gasps> the witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. You literally gave us the evidence, huh? But, but that can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. <laughs> yes, get her ass at your <laughs> fucking roaster on the stand. Congratulations, perhaps you finally found your true calling in love. <laughs> I love him. I love him. That's my dada. Daddy. Harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection, chopped liver? I could walk out of this courtroom and no one would notice. I could just walk right out. No one would notice. But it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Well, now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? <laughs> it's me and Edgeworth against this lunch lady. Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. <laughs> I do remember some things accurately, at least. Some things. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. How many testimonies are you allowed to give in court? I've never been in court before, but like, do they just let you testify as many times as you want? They're like, oh, you forgot something, so just tell the story again, but different this time. <laughs> Shout out to the lunch ladies out here catching straight. No, she deserves this. Just trust me on this. She deserves this. She's crazy. I don't know. I'm not in law school. That's kind of the answer I was expecting. <laughs> they can call you back sometimes. As many as needed or until you plead the fifth. What does pleading the fifth do? Because that means you just don't want to speak, right? I feel like, how can you be allowed to plead the fifth? Oh, I guess there are times where you could be in danger if you testify. Not fully. Hmm. Do they give you like three plead the fifth points? Like you get three and then you run out and then you have to answer all the questions? You don't want to give testimony of incriminating yourself. Oh, so pleading the, the fifth could just literally be like, I'm guilty and I don't want to say it out loud. <laughs> I don't know how any of this works, by the way. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. But how did you get there? When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. Okay, well, how the fuck did you get over there? You are quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. No, you don't. You literally don't. We've been tearing apart your testimony all fucking day. <laughs> you suck. That's me, Angel Star. <laughs> That wasn't a very good metaphor, first of all. A cobra is kind of a snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. And also she's threatening me on the stand and just getting away with it? She's lying on the stand and she's threatening me on the stand. And the judge is just like, I love caviar. <laughs> I love food. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Wow. <laughs> I felt like, um... <laughs> What's that 
movie where the guy just reads everything on the teleprompter and like doesn't um anchorman anchorman he's like the news anchorman that just reads the teleprompter and doesn't think like there was a scene where he's like go fuck yourself san diego and he doesn't even realize what he said i felt like that just now a predator this one a leopard woman wow <laughs> just read it and didn't even think very well mr wright your cross-examination if you will so first of all is there not a fucking partition there's a you can't like go run over there if there's a partition unless there's a door hold on where's the where's the thing how could she get through the fence she'd have to go all the way around she wouldn't be able to get there in time Run behind a partition off to her side. So where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Can I... Can I just sentence her to death right now? Oh, that didn't work. Shit. How did she get over there? Okay, hold on. I'm going to load. Hi, Andrew. How are you? How you doing? Thank you for the resub. Yeah, how can she arrest someone? And also, how did you get there? You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details. It is. I'd like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. The lunch land car was. She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. That's what I'm saying. I went over it, of course. Amazing, the cough of queen, lunch lady athlete, indeed. Whose side are you on? Is it even possible to go over it? It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence, so she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high too. Oh, you can go over it. So how did Miss Guy not get away? This judge needs to go to hell. <laughs> and I'm, I mean that. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. She didn't answer my question about the fucking, about the fence. What happened? When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Didn't this happen like yesterday? Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. So she's probably talking about the car muffler. Just that one word? So what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. <laughs> no, the court doesn't see Miss Star. <laughs> oh. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Damn. How much of an emergency phone if it's out of order? Hmm. Good witnessing witness. And also, it's only out of order that day? Something's a little fishy. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney... Also, how did she see it? If she was on the other side of the fence and the wall was in the way. I bet she has a boyfriend who works in phones or whatever. <laughs> and the judge is also her boyfriend. 
The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. Emma is sitting literally right next to me. Can I not ask Emma about the phone call? I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall but had to use her cell instead. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha, I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. You couldn't have seen it, the fucking wall is in the way! The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. There's no way you could have seen that, there's literally a wall! I want this woman to go to jail for being annoying. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Then when I boldly grabbed her arm. <laughs> Imagine she did the breasted boobily thing. I breastily boobed her arms and, and titted her hands into handcuffs. <laughs> the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? The fucking wall's in the way! Ain't no way. I think perjury is the word you're looking for, yes. That too, also. There's no way. She's crazy. Miss Starr, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. She's still a person. She's gonna have bias. Everyone does. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who together with the chief prosecutor kicked me out two years ago. Ah! Uh, did she fucking stage this to get Edgeworth and, uh, and the chief prosecutor in trouble? Because it was all done in Edgeworth's car. Ah. Uh, well, Miss Starr, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. <laughs> She's all one-liners and nothing else. If I'm a rookie and I'm able to like suss out all her lies, literally all she can do is give a one-liner. Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. She's a, she's a dumb bitch. <laughs> she is a dumb bitch. I can say that because Women's History Month is over. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the backside of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. What? <laughs> order, order, what is the meaning of all this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. <laughs> See? I have skill and one-liners. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie the witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. Oh. <laughs> Well, I will be getting it wrong. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> the witness lied about. Uh... All of it? <laughs> what she saw, where she saw it, the order of events. I feel like it's possible. I feel like it's possible that the chief prosecutor, I forgot her name. I feel like it's possible that the chief prosecutor um, tried to call the emergency line first and then went to the body to like see if he was okay. And that's why she had blood all over. But then she still wouldn't have been able to see it. So I think it's, I think it's where she saw it. That relates the most, I think, because I think she was on the other side. And also, if she's delivering lunch to her boyfriend, she's probably on that side anyway. I'm gonna say where she saw it. 
Miss Guy tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's point that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Well then how did she see all this stuff? Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. <laughs> let me lie! <laughs> I love right. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? Could she have been in the security booth? With her boyfriend? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed the crime was... Eee, please be right! Please be right! This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Oh, I think I got it right! Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Her boyfriend's there. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. <coughs> I remember in your testimony you said, you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? <gasps> well, Miss Star, how many years have I been getting the better of men <laughs> to think that the tables could be turned? Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. I must date him immediately. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective, you should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty, is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. This photograph tells all it was the defendant who stabbed the victim. How did she get that photo? Who took that photo? She's in cahoots with someone. We are cahooting. The truth still stands. But who is she in cahoots with? Still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. Finally! Finally, they talk about perjury in this game. You want to talk about perjury? She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? <laughs> Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? <sighs> difference in lighting! <laughs> Distance to the crime, angle of view to the crime. Uh, it looks like the same it looks like the same distance though to where she said she was so it wouldn't be distance it'd be the it'd be the angle i think it's the angle i can be your angle or your devil why the angle at which she saw the crime occur would change the angle what do you mean uh um well <laughs> The security guard station is on the second floor, and um, she would have sort of a th more 3D view of the crime. And this is important, why? Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm specifically ignoring the chat because I know that you guys love to tell me the answer, and that's not fun. It wouldn't be the dis- Is it actually the lighting? Please tell me it is not the lighting. This looks like a joke answer. 
And there, it's a difference in lighting. Lighting? What does that mean? Well, it means, uh, no! <laughs> It's not. It's not. Don't worry about it. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Okay, I guess it is the distance. They look the same, though. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. That's what I thought. I don't see how that would change what she could see. It's the angle. Oh, I couldn't say the angle. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Oh. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness, you, yes. Are you hungry? <laughs> you ordered the squid wheels. <laughs> The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. Then how did you get the photo? Who took the photo? She's in on this with someone. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the, the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. You gotta be fucking kidding me. You expect me to believe this? That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking and be, ah, uh, no. That's quite a detour. No way. No way. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? F -f -f five minutes? <laughs> hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it, I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. <laughs> you have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? I hate this bitch. <laughs> I hate her, absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Sure. Objection. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You can make pasta in that amount of time if you like it al dente. Oh, put the lunches away. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. What does that mean? A five minute blank, isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, your honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey. Don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer, you would run. But this time was different. Miss Skye dawdled at the scene of the crime, she even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way, it's inconceivable. Yeah! <laughs> that settles it, I'm eating. Dude, I'm, I'm hungry too. Every time she pulls something out, I'm like, oh, I want food. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth is the next witness ready to go. Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. <laughs> that was too close. Sentence her to death, please. I'm afraid that the cough up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Damn. Well done, chat. Oh! Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. Oh, come on. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Uh, is this your jumbo lunch box? What is going on here? How was she allowed to do this? Woohoo, a triple decker. 
out of defense to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more to, oh my. How many are you gonna let her have? Let me go get a snack. I want some peanuts. Hold on. Oh my God. I forgot. I have cookies and cream pretzels. I got them from Trader Joe's. They're really yummy. Really yummy. Since I was feeling light yesterday, I was like, maybe I need some sugar. Not that I need to be convinced to buy sugar. Ugh. Mm -hmm. How many testimonies is she gonna give? Let's hear about this decisive evidence. You won't be disappointed. I will be. I think it helped, yeah. I got them in the morning and I started feeling better. Hi, Cyber Tease. Thank you for the sub. It's very sweet. Thank you. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. How do you know that? The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. How would you know that? And also, why do you have her shoe? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. <laughs> Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? <clears throat> Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. Ah! She has like six boyfriends! Oh my god! This is insane. Oh. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. <laughs> Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget. I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh my God, <laughs> his eyes are gonna pop out of his head. Hi, Annihilator, thank you for five years. Happy anniversary, big day. Nuh-uh. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty solid. <laughs> You could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Then she would have brought this up earlier. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Oh, Jesus. I'm so glad everyone hates her, <laughs> except the judge. <laughs> she just is scary. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim. So you brought it to the forensics department? If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. Another blood type matched that of the defendant. How would you know that? Wouldn't you need to get a sample from her? You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. 
You claim to know something about blood test, rookie? Huh. Well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and AB. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. It's just a figure of speech, Ms. Ryan. <laughs> Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all blood tests out there, which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. Emma, can you shut the hell up? <laughs> That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone's but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm, so the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. Hold it. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts? Emma wants her sister in jail. I'm done with her. Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? Is there a photo of her shoe? <gasps> she was wearing black shoes! Ah! Ah! <laughs> this is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Oh, it's the victim's shoe. Never mind. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought they said it was hers. There's a, uh, yes, there's a problem. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there's one critical problem with this evidence, a clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now, but you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. Yeah, um, what am I gonna say? <laughs> What is the contradictory? What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with the evidence. Uh, why is there blood on the bottom? Take that. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Oh, good, I got it right. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie, or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Is she allowed to just keep doing this? Can she just do this? Can she just like violently threaten me like <laughs> in court? Hmm, indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense, the victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of the shoe? I need a cookies and cream pretzel. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Take that. The problem lies in the footprint. Yes. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Fee. Whatever he said, I agree. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then isn't it strange? The floor has no blood. The floor has no blood. Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha. <gasps> uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. I can't get over that <laughs> she presented this photo as evidence. We've used it three times to call her out on a lie. Three times! That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints, but it's by the, it's by the fucking trunk! Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order. Well, witness? What, huh? I, uh, 
great going, Mr. Wright, but it's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. I think he was already dead. I think he was already dead and he was brought there. Because the autopsy literally says he was dead. He was killed sometime between 4 p.m. and 5.30. So I think he was killed somewhere else and then put in the trunk and like staged Edgeworth committing the crime. It's just like the boat one we did. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. Yes, I do, Phoenix. I'm just good at finding contradictions. I know. What? I see, now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Ooh, the oil drum. She's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. <laughs> I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. <laughs> Apparently, you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. So she's going to say it washed away the footprints? Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Oh my god. Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha. Uh -huh. You don't mean, yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the blood stains that would become evidence against her. But how would she know it's filled with water? It's called an oil drum. That ties things up quite nicely. The blood stains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Skye's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him? But she was holding it in her right hand, so why would her right hand be cut if she was holding the knife in that hand? Cause she's left-handed. So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it, but enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, your honor. This law system moves fast. It takes like three years to get here in America. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Skye, girl. What did you just say? Huh? Me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the footprints. Well, I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called evidence. <laughs> evidence. Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough of queen. Look at this. A photograph? How the fuck did you get this? 
I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Well, it wasn't on his foot. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait, look at the asphalt in this photo. It's clearly wet. So it was wet before he got killed? I'm so confused. <laughs> Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seemed this is what your sister wanted anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, Mia. Wet or not, don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Now she's got one-liners. Get yourself, get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. At the photo? This is the last piece of evidence. Is it? <laughs> she just keeps pulling evidence out of her butt. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. No! Objection! <laughs> oh my god! Now I see why they call him Edgeworth. <laughs> Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? <laughs> Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph, the last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah, I'll think later. <laughs> Wait, can I, <coughs> can I see it? Oh, I can't look at it. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem. Um... I don't know. Oh, a muffler? Is it a muffler? Take that. The problem with the photograph is here. Did I get it wrong? What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Muffler! She said muffler! Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said muffler. Oh my God. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part on a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Oh my God. Yeah, the tailpipe is stuffed. Isn't that how you kill someone in a car? Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? <laughs> so what if there's something in sticking out of the car's muffler? What does that have to do with the case? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Sorry, Miss Star, but that's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. Hmm? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth and the muffler is related to the case. Cause she said it! She said it on the phone! Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the people in this game have some uh, really interesting screams. Yarg. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh, whoa, rug. 
<laughs> well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do dis a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Let's go. Agreed? I suppose so. Whew. That was close. But we made it, at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30-minute recess. 30-minute recess?! It's lunchtime after all. I'm glad he said that because I need to be. He's still hungry? <laughs> ah, oh my God, this case is so good. This case is so good. I'm having such a good time. I really like this one. I'm glad we're playing it. I just need to take a quick stretch break. So I'm gonna pause the recording. So YouTube, you'll see me in like half a sec. We are so back. We are so back and ready to send this woman to jail. <laughs> Welcome back. I have my refilled cup of tea to keep my throat happy. These streams are tough on my throat, but I love this game. I love this game. I just wish there was voice acting. I would die. I would die. I, she needs to go to jail for the simple crime of being annoying. <laughs> Imagine if you could go to jail for being annoying. I'd have a life sentence. <laughs> I'd have a life sentence. Okay, let's keep going. I don't think we'll finish it today because I feel like there's probably more. Usually these cases are like three days, aren't they? So I don't know. I don't know how much time is left on this one. I wasn't expecting to finish it today, but it's so good so far. It put in maximum security. <laughs> put me in max security. <laughs> oh my God. I think this is too hot still. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we're gonna finish it today. These cases are long. That's fine. I'll try to get through the rest of the this day's trial. Um, Mr. Wright? Huh, what? Are the trials always like this with you? Like you're swimming up from the bottom of a lake about to reach the surface, but no matter how hard you paddle, you never seem to get there? Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Except today we're swimming in quicksand. So what happened to your sister anyway? Apparently she got called off to the judge's chambers. Hmm, probably something to do with that piece of cloth. So, this is where we turn this trial around, right? Our only weapon, a tiny and significant piece of cloth. I'm the one who's starting to feel tiny and insignificant to tell the truth. Hola, partner. Is this that fucking detective guy? Oh my god, it's high noon. They say you show a red cloth to a bull, it'll fire up its temper. That's what they told me when I was a youngin' at least. Officer Marshall. Thought I'd come take a look, see at how the trial's going. Looks like I'm late. They've got their own ranch locked down tighter than a fort in enemy territory. This is exactly how I spoke when I was in my Red Dead, like, little phase. I played Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2 nonstop for like three months. And this is exactly how I sounded. That hard to slip out of, huh? What's going on over there anyway? All the police I've seen these last two days have been really on edge. Oh, was I reading the wrong one? I think I was reading the wrong one. Don't you got enough on your plate without worrying about other people, compadre? You could be worrying about the chief prosecutor's taste in mufflers, for example. Um, Officer Marshall? The whole muffler thing didn't have anything to do with scarves. She wasn't even wearing a scarf. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend that that was an inhaler. <laughs> you don't say. Now don't that just beat all. <gasps> he's the co-conspirator. He, no, he's the other one. He's the other one. It was, it was him, it was him and, um, Angel, Miss Angel or whatever her name is, Angel Star. It was, it was them together. I've seen the red breeze blow at her slender neck many a time. I saw it that day too. I saw, uh, she was wearing a red muffler. What? At the award ceremony that afternoon. Edward's seen it too, I'd reckon. What does that mean? In the photograph taken at the crime scene, she wasn't wearing a scarf. But the, the cloth in the muffler was white. So, where to go? 
So Miss Star wasn't mistaken. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Remember, partner, sometimes you gotta grab the bull by the horns, and sometimes you just gotta let that bull go where it will. Time will tell. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. So what are we sw swimming in now, Mr. Wright? If it's steak sauce, I can hook you up with some fine ribs. Ooh-wee! <laughs> Jacques. Here we go again. <laughs> Her accent has improved. <laughs> Thanks, G. I got the G smiley stamp of approval. Approval. I'd like to resume. What's up? The judge keeps looking over at the prosecution. Is something wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? Your face is blue, your lips are purple, you're sweating bullets. That furrowed brow, those grinding teeth, those watery eyes. I just can't stop finding myself lost in them. You're just so beautiful. And then the judge... Never mind. <laughs> What's wrong? Your eyes are unfocused. You're doubled over. Your back is bent. It can't be. This can't happen. I wonder what happened to Mr. Edgeworth. Well then, I believe it is time we continued on with this trial. During our recess... Can I see the text log? There's no way to see the text log. This is unacceptable. Hmm. It seems our prosecutor is quite beside himself. Uh, excuse me. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> so stupid oh my God. fucking excuse me hold on <laughs> I need a minute what's with this guy what the fuck that is not a human being that is not a human being when she said that human robot was stabbing him over and over she meant him this is fucking I'm disturbed a strange stuffy aura seems to be filling the courtroom. Who is this guy? <laughs> hey, the temperature rose 5.7 degrees when that man came in. Who on earth is he? I have to sneeze again. <laughs> ah, it's you. disturbing this feels like i've never had sleep paralysis but this feels like a sleep paralysis demon oh <laughs> sorry i'm late Uggy. Uggy. the roads were bad <laughs> it's just me long time no see eh Uggy? how you been swim much these days uh hello hello no i've been so busy 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 smizzy Uggy, my boy you have to make time to relax who is this guy is the reason this case is so long because I have to translate everything he's saying? Yes, indeed. Aji seems to be his nickname for the judge. I'm afraid you're right. Very afraid. Um, sorry, but who are you? Aha, so you're right Oh, the attorney. I've heard good things about you, son. Eh, uh, uh, thanks. So sorry about our little worthy giving you all that trouble, eh? Who? Worthy. Edgeworth? You know, we should all go swimming together sometime. Jolly. I think his spray tan would come off if he went <laughs> swimming. Little worthy? Mr. Wright, you don't know the district chief of police? This is, this man is the district chief of police? Chief of police? He's the top ranking police officer in the entire district. Why? Oh, God damn. I hate the way he looks. Stop, stop. Oh my God, I don't like it. Something about this guy and the way he looks just disturbs me. Name's Gant, Damon Gant. Pleasant to meet, pleased to meet you everyone. Is that a, what's that a pun for? Damon Gant? Or is it not a pun? Damon Gant. So uh, to what do we owe this honor today? Demon. Mm. But the Gant part. Gant Nandor. <laughs> it's been over two years since you last came to this courtroom, hasn't it? Well, it's worthy here. Look at the poor fellow. 
I just thought I'd help out by bringing this. Hey, that's my sister's muffler. So Miss Star wasn't just saying things. When the crime occurred, Miss Sky really was wearing that muffler. But I think that it was stuffed into that exhaust pipe. But it, there's no way it was! Uh, I don't have the photo. But it wasn't! It was white! On Little Worthy's car, no less. Ugh. Oh, the slow blinking and the staring and the smiling. It's really quite embarrassing even for us. What's this? It's what you'd call a switchblade knife. Quite perplexing, this. No, oh, not this again. Chief, what kind of outfit are you running? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, how could they miss such a vital piece of evidence? If your investigators are this lax, how do you expect us to do our job? Now, wait a minute, Worthy. I've no desire to hear your excuses. Ooh. I'm telling you to wait. Or didn't you hear me? Have a look at this document where it says person in charge of investigation. There's no mistaking that signature is there. Miles Edgeworth? That's not fair. On the day of the crime, I, I had... <gasps> oh, they sent him to the award show on purpose. This was a setup! This was a setup! They sent him to the award show on purpose! They sent him on purpose! But you're the person in charge. I'll expect a written apology. <gasps> oh. Speaking of people who need to die. What, are you serious? Don't be too upset. We'll find a way to clean this mess up this mess that you made. This is the first time I've seen Mr. Edgeworth at a loss for words. This kind of major blunder is unlike you, Mr. Edgeworth. <gasps> Gah. The court accepts this new evidence, but I'd like to ask the defense a favor first. Yes? Just to be sure, I'd like to take a look at the blade of this knife. The blade, Your Honor? Well, I don't see why not. Could you open it up for me, I wonder? I don't know how to open a switchblade. Yes, well, I think all you have to do is push that switch and... If I cut my finger, Mr. Wright, I wouldn't be able to pound my gavel anymore. Because <laughs> that's all I do up here, is I just pound my gavel. Yeah, but if I cut my finger, I wouldn't be able to point it at people anymore. <laughs> Come on, just hurry up and open it. Oh, it's choosing it for me. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, why is it sweaty? What is that? SL92. There's a small tag on this knife. It seems to say SL92. What does that mean? Well, I've heard something similar. DL6 of DL6 incident fame. What is? I'm not certain, but I get the feeling I've seen this somewhere before. Letters like this or letters that looked a lot like this somehow. Was it on the note? <laughs> Don't scare me like that. <gasps> it's broken. I'm the one who's scared. Look at this knife blade. The tip is broken off. And this dark red stain. Blood? Switchblade knife added to the court record. But this isn't... Oh, in the defendant's muffler. So there's... Why are there two knives? I wonder if this is the real knife and then the other one was like to frame Edgeworth. You don't keep a muffler knife? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't planning on it. This does not excuse the actions of the police department. I would like to hear an explanation from the chief of police himself. I'm terribly sorry, but could I ask you to testify for us about the split between the prosecutors and the police and this knife? Brogov at Nears. Sure, sure thing, not a problem, not even a little one, really. He's wearing gloves too, by the way, might I add. He's also wearing gloves. This knife is special, but I can't say how here. Unless there's evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman, 
That was a bad day for the department. We weren't in any shape to do an investigation. A detective was killed at the police department. See, what a mess. The time of the crime? 5.15. Scary coincidence, eh? It's not officially linked to this here case, so I can't talk much about it. There was a murder at the police department? A detective? That's hush-hush information, Aji. We haven't exactly announced it yet. So, an... <gasps> That's why in the intro it was doubled. It was doubled. It showed someone raising a knife and then it split off into two? So there were two killed at the same time? Objection. Wait a second. You said 515. That's the exact time that Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. What is going on? Order, order. Anyway, we at the department were all a flustered, as you might well assume. We're in the middle of a top, top secret investigation. Don't tell anyone, okay? I think we understand the police department situation. Well, Mr. Wright, two detectives killed at the same time in two different places. The chances of that are really slim, scientifically speaking, of course. I'd like to exercise my right to cross-examine the witness. Very well, however, keep your questions focused on the case at hand. This is crazy! Where did this guy even come from? Oh my god, I don't even know, like... <laughs> Living, breathing nerd emoji, and I love her for it. I just love that she keeps uh, right in check. She's so mean to him, I love it. This knife is special, but I can't say how here. Why not? Excuse me, special? Mm-hmm, hard to come by this particular knife anywhere else. Um, might that special thing be this little tag? Oh, sorry, Rido, but I can't say that now, not that. SL92? Oh no, it's not the same as the memo. We've established that the knife in Goodman's chest was this knife. Now, why was there another knife at the scene of the crime? It's quite a mystery. And like a mystery, it's wrapped in something. A muffler. Wrapped in a muffler in a muffler. Unless there's evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman. Why is this all blurred out? Name and ID number are written here. Sergeant Bruce Goodman, 584218. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly. <laughs> the reason we have a written language in the first place. Sergeant Bruce Goodman, ID Yabba Dab. <laughs> you see, wouldn't that be <laughs> Yabba Dab? Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point, tee hee. <laughs> Hi, Levy, how are you? Hardly used Twitch last year, and it's nice to be a regular part of community. Oh, we're happy to see you. I'll always be around um, when you guys like come in and out as you want. So, <laughs> unless I die, <laughs> unless I die, then I don't know. I guess I can't really. <laughs> I guess I can't really. Never mind. I can't promise I'll always be here because I might die. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> uh six seven five wait. Six seven five. That's what's written on this. Six seven five SL not hold on. Wait a second. Ah, at last, an honest-to-goodness objection. This knife, this has to have something to do with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? Aha, an honest-to-goodness, what do you mean? From Mudgy, this is great. <laughs> this guy is not mentally present. Look at the tag on this knife. It reads SL92. And this is important, why? Over here we also have a memo that was on the body of the victim. Hmm, what's this? 
Six minus seven S twelve two. Your Honor, it's upside down. Upside. The printed name on the mega memo makes it look like it's right side up. But turn it around and what do you get? 221 SL9. <gasps> Two, is 221 the date he was, he was died? Aha! Uh -huh. Whoever wrote this note was holding the piece of paper upside down. SL9. That's the same thing written on the knife's tag. SL9-2? The memo is Australian, your honor. This memo is Australian. Well, chief? Ah, well. I guess the cat's out of the bag. You win, Rido. The date he was died. I win? Uh, what game is this guy playing? This knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. I think this guy did it. So this knife was stolen? Yes, but on the day of the murder. It was evidence, you say. Was it in fact a murder weapon? Nice, nice, nice. Good show, little worthy. It was a murder weapon as it happens. It was evidence from a case long since solved. So this knife was stolen on the day of the murder and it was found in the exhaust pipe of Edgeworth's car. What the fuck is going on? This is so weird. I feel like I'm trying to solve two murders now. Hard to think there isn't a connection there. That was a bad day for the department. We weren't in any shape to do an investigation. A detective was killed at the police department. See, what a mess. The time of the crime, 5.15. Scary coincidence. Five fifteen. But that's... That's when Detective Goodman was killed in the prosecutor's office. What? Funny, isn't it? A murder at the prosecutor's place and a murder at our place at the very same time. <laughs> yes, it's so hilarious. What are the chances? Coincidence? This is just my gut feeling, but I'd say there's a zero point... Oh, okay, I can't read her shit anymore. <laughs> Not now, Ima. Chief Grant, please tell us more about the incident. It's not officially linked to this year case, so I can't talk much about it. It kind of is. It kind of is linked. I'm not going to lie. How can you say there's no connection? How? Because I'm the chief of police. I can't just say anything. I please, Rido. You understand. Try to understand, Rido. <laughs> He's got the judge saying this now. Well, if you can prove there's a connection, more power to you. Maybe there is something that ties the two murders together. Whatever it is, I'd better find it and get to the bottom of this. Two detectives were killed at 515, one at the prosecutor's office and one at the police department. That can't be a coincidence. And that knife. What was it doing in there? I better check this knife out. Um... Can I examine it? Ooh. I'm so lost. Uh, case number? I don't remember where, but I think I've seen something like this before. Something similar to what's written on this tag. It wasn't that long ago either. Oh, we did this one already. We did that one already. I already presented this though. I don't know. I don't know. Something happened at the police department too, huh? You got a good look in your eyes there, Rido, my boy. Sharp, hungry. So something did happen. And why wasn't I informed? Why weren't you informed? Well, why didn't you ask? Oh my god, <laughs> I hate this guy. No matter, I understand. You were busy, what with Lana's case and all. 
Well, what happened? What happened at the police department that day? Detective was killed at the police department. See, what a mess. Time of the crime, 515. Scary coincidence. It's not officially linked to this here case, so I can't talk much about it. I don't understand why it wouldn't be if we found... Oh. I think he said this earlier. I did check the knife out. I already presented the knife stuff. Knife was evidence in a case that was stolen from the department's evidence room. Did I press him on this? So this knife was stolen? Yes, but on the day of the murder. It was evidence, you say. Was it in fact a murder weapon? Oh, yes. From what murder? I'm so lost, dude. Because I already presented the knife. Uh, I can feel my brain, like... drying up. The juicy wrinkles are drying. <sighs> what a mess. Time of the crime, 515. Scary coincidence. It's not officially linked to this here case, so I can't talk much about it. Hold on, I'm gonna save. Because I'm gonna start doing stuff, but I don't know what the right answer is. Can I present something? Can I present the note and just be like, yes, it is. It clearly is. Hi, Dan! How are you? We're trying to solve a murder. <laughs> Thank you for the raid, that's very sweet. Oh, I fucked up. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep trying. Oh my god, it is though. Why do I have to explain to this dumb judge and this dumb chief of police that the cases are linked? It's not officially linked to this here case, so I can't talk about it, but it is! Objection. Oh my god. I can't do anything. <laughs> I can't do anything right. This is so hard! Being a lawyer is so hard! Dan had to write and run. That's fine, thank you for letting me know. No problem. Oh, uh, I don't know. I've, I think I've pressed all of them. I could go back and press everything again. Can I press this? How can you say there's no connection? How? Oh yeah, we did, we saw this already. I'm trying to prove it to you. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying. Uh. What about... My attorney's badge. <laughs> That'll do it. This one is so hard. Blue Badger did it. The ticket? Would someone be able to give me a hint? I'm so stuck. Like, I don't want the answer. I just want like a nudge in the right direction because I genuinely don't know. Like, I feel like I pressed everything. Unless I missed one. There's something you didn't press. Okay, got it. Thank you. Oh, I did this already. I did this one. Coincidence. This is just my gut feeling. Chief Gant, please tell us more about the incident. I'll officially link to this case, so I can't talk much about it. I don't think I... Did I press this one? On the same day that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department. That's a fact. Surprising, isn't it, Edgy? I'm at a loss for words. 
And the perpetrator, do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect, just arrested him, in fact. Just arrested, that was quick. Thank you, bro team, I appreciate it. But there's still a lot of un unanswered questions. Maybe you could help Rido. I suppose I could help if you help me by giving me data on your case. <laughs> oh, good one, this kid's sharp. Okay, here's the deal. I'll tell you one thing and one thing only. <sighs> I'm gonna say, I'm assuming it's another stabbing because they said it, they, didn't they say they used a knife? Oh, what, what? Oh, I don't know. We don't need to know when, because we already know it was 5.15, so that's fine. Um, I'm going to say, oh, maybe I should do how. I'm going to, I'm going to do how. Well, how was the detective killed? How was he killed? Now that's the interesting part. It was what we in the force call a stabbing. <gasps> it was a stabbing with a knife. A knife? That's exactly the same as Detective Goodman. That's the spirit. We're cooking now. It's creepy how excited he is about this. But you know, that's not the only thing that was exactly the same. What do you mean? There were more similarities between the two cases than the cause of death. It seems like I'm going to have to press this a bit harder. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, he's continuing on with the time. Police department. Uh, bad day for the department. That was evidence in a case stolen from the department's evidence room. So this knife was stolen? Yes, but on the day of the murder. It was evidence, you say. Was it in fact a murder weapon? Nice. Oh, we did this already. Fuck. I'm stuck again. <laughs> I'm stuck again. So this knife was stolen on the day of the murder and it was found in the exhaust pipe of Edward's car. Hard to think there isn't a connection there. I'm stuck again. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did this one already. Detective was killed at the police department. So now do I present evidence? Because I tried doing it before, but it wouldn't let me, so... I can feel my brain cells being set on fire. Why? I don't understand why I have to prove to the chief of police that these two murders are related. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Oh my god. I don't know. Do I press him again? How can you say there's no connection? Oh. This is so annoying! I don't understand why I have to prove to this guy that they're related! I've already used the knife! I've used the knife! Do I have to present our knife instead of their knife? Yeah, the the introduction of another case is just making my brain melt. Oh my god, dude. I don't know, because I'm choosing stuff that's like obvious. Press him on the other one and pick the option you haven't yet. Will he let me do it a second time? Maybe he will let me do it a second time. Let's try it again. Um, it was this one? Oh yeah, it was this one. Can I do it again? 
I'll tell you one thing and one thing only as I get him to tell me a second thing. So tell me, where was the victim found? Please tell me it was in a trunk. Please. Well, I can't speak on where the corpse was found, but I can say the crime took place in the evidence room at the police department. Oh. The evidence room. Wait a second. I have heard of that. The evidence room. Didn't he mention that in his testimony just now? This knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. There's the connection between the two cases. Thank you. I didn't know I could ask him again because he specifically said you can only ask one thing. Or I'll only tell you one thing. You seem happy, Mr. Wright. Happy. We just got handed our ticket to go to town on this case. With the link between the two cases established, we finally have some leverage. Now we can get Gant to testify about the details. So what now? I have, there's more? What else? I pressed him on everything. Do I press him again? <gasps> Yay! Chief, the defense's position is simply this. The connection between these two cases has already been proven. You don't say. Well, out with it, Rida. What's your connection? Does he have a brain? Does he have a brain? Yes, out with it, Mr. R oh my god! The connection is a place mentioned in the testimony we just heard. The knife found in the lot was stolen from the police department's evidence room. Not to mention the victim had on him the case number on the knife's evidence tag. And we also know that the detective murdered at the police department was killed in that very same evidence room. Indeed. <laughs> There do seem to be too many connections for it to be a coincidence. Why does he slow blink like that? I hate it. I feel like he's gonna jump out of my computer screen at me. You two make a good pair. It took my men two days to find out what you deduced right here. Chief, I request that you release your information on the victim at the police department. See, that's the tricky part. It hasn't been announced yet and all. Can we get the information unofficially? <laughs> I respect him for trying. Mm. Sure, why not? It's unofficial. What, really? Who would have guessed? You don't ask, you don't receive. I'll cooperate, but I can't reveal the name of the victim at the department, okay? If you're going to tell us a little, why not tell us everything? Ah, uh, well, case information is sticky stuff. You have to do everything properly. Oh well, I guess I might as well try to get what I can out of him. <sighs> ID number? I'm curious about the ID number. What if it's the exact same? Wait, hold on. What is Goodman's? 5842189. 5842189. How about you tell me the victim's ID number? Why not? It's not like you'll be able to tell who it is from that. Of course not. You won't tell me their name after all. We keep a tight lid on ID numbers, so don't go getting your hopes up. The number is... Yeah! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! We broke the fabric of space and time! We broke the fabric of space and time! Oh my god! <laughs> well, that's quite long! <laughs> and we have to remember these. It drives me nuts. Eight, two, I can't do it. <laughs> we know, Judge. <laughs> you didn't even get the first number right. Oh my God. Well, Mr. Wright, does this tell you anything? Yes. The ID number of the victim at the police department. This tells me something. <laughs> Actually, it does, Your Honor. It does. I think, meaning, it has to be what I think it is. But what does this mean? <laughs> well, let's hear what the defense has to say. You say the ID number of the detective who was murdered at the police department tells you something? What does it tell you? Take that. 
Witness. What is it, Mr. Wright? You're grinning like a schoolgirl on prom night. No, I, it's just, I got confused. And this is news? Huh? Just come out with both guns blazing, like you always do. The police department, the prosecutor's office. Two places, two detectives murdered at one time. Actually, I happen to have a police ID number here. Oh. Oh. No, that's Bruce Goodman's. Yeah, that's Bruce Goodman. Is it yours? No, I'm a defense attorney, remember? Who allowed him to be a judge? How did he get this job? I don't understand. This is the ID number of our victim, Detective Goodman. Shame on you, Rido. Personal IDs are top secret. Detective Goodman's ID number is 5842189. And? This means what exactly? Huh? Wait, that ID number we heard from the chief earlier. That started with A2. Hmm, I've forgotten. So is, oh wait, it's backwards? I thought it was the same one. 5842189. And then did he say 9812485? You didn't even get the first number right again. The number the chief of police gave us. Oh no, it is the same one. 5842189. Wait a second, right? What does this mean? That's what I want to know. The two ID numbers are identical. In other words, the detective killed in the police department's evidence room was Bruce Goodman. What the fuck does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? What does our witness think about that? Oh, oh, sharp as attack, Rhino, sharp as attack. But wait, Detective Goodman is our victim. He was killed at 515 in the underground parking lot. Yet a Detective Bruce Goodman was also killed at the police department in the evidence room at the exact same time. <laughs> That's impossible. So what we're saying is the same person was killed at the same time. And in completely different locate in a completely different location. <laughs> order, order, chief. What does this mean? We're all just gonna object each other. What I want to know is why didn't I hear about this? Yes, it's top secret. Fine, but I'm the prosecutor in charge of the case. Now, just wait a second, worthy. No need to get all flustered. Your Honor, the police department has made a grave error in this case. Wait. I said wait. Or didn't you hear me? The oversight, the grave error. Mr. Edgeworth, they're yours. Huh? What, how, how dare? We informed you yesterday. I believe it was our officer Meekins who brought you the news. <gasps> the one he got mad at? The one that he like, that he like, Mr. Wright, where have we heard that name before? We were talking to him in his office. Aha. Uh -huh. He said he was gonna get him fired. Um. <laughs> this hall monitor. Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. <laughs> he kind of gets that for being a diva. You don't mean him. According to Meekins, you didn't accept the report. Hard to believe. But your officer, he told me, he said that report had nothing to do with the Lana Sky incident. Exactly. Detective Bruce Goodman murdered in the police department evidence room. Mr. Edgeworth, the victim's name is written right on the top of the report. <laughs> Why didn't your officer tell me? He couldn't because you hushed him away. Oh, Edgeworth, you idiot. Honestly, I'm not sure if that officer was capable of making the connection. He did seem challenged. He was just really intensely doing his job. In any case, that is a serious error and a gross negligence of duty on your part, Worthy. I love when they just start throwing out objections. But sir, you could have submitted that report this morning to the court as evidence. Then I... Why does he stare? 
was such luck this time worthy, or should I say unworthy? We got more people with one-liners. What? Now, what was the second rule of evidence law, hmm? Well, Mr. Wright, huh? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> rule two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And how is this rule relevant? Normally, you submit a list of evidence to be used in court before the trial. This report wasn't on that list. So, what does this mean? I couldn't submit this evidence until a connection was proven in court. The connection was just proven by Rido over there. Good job, Rido, my boy. Huh? Uh, hi. <laughs> I was just doing my job. No. No! <laughs> <laughs> it seems we have come to the end of this trial. I know you're going through a tough time, Worthy, with all those rumors. You were even in the defendant's chair just this past December. This guy's creepy. I apologize for this terrible lack of due diligence on my part. Mr. Edgeworth, please, just give me one day. I'll get to the bottom of what happened, if it's the last thing I do. You'd better get results this time, really. You have my profound apologies, sir. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I don't think he's put, honestly, he kind of deserved this. He was being so rude. He was being so rude to that officer and it bit him in the ass and I think he deserves it. I don't think there's ever been an error this serious in the history of this court. I will grant one further day as the prosecution has requested. Will that be sufficient, sufficient Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, your honor, thank you. Whatever your punishment for this, for your sake, I hope it's not decisive. <sighs> Very well, court is adjourned. Oh my God. <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. So my current theory, unless they're trying to do some fun, like multi-dimensional sci-fi type of DLC or whatever, unless it's that, I feel like Bruce, <clears throat> there was like a setup to kill Bruce in the in the evidence room and then they moved him to the the car and like set up the chief prosecutor. Like this all feels like a setup. I don't think this is like I don't think this is like there were two Bruce Goodmans or whatever because the chief himself said that he had to remember everyone's IDs. He said I have to remember every single one of them. So he would know Bruce Goodman's um, ID, he didn't get it because his card was there. He got it because he remembers them. So it makes sense why the card was in the parking lot. Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm really enjoying this case, but like, man, my brain is like fried. Ooh, I can't wait to play again, but I do need to give my brain a little, a little nappy wappy, a little slumber time. <laughs>